Welcome to our virtual classroom, my dear students. In our class, we respect each other, we do our best, and we support one another as we learn together. Hi students! How is everyone doing? I hope all of you are doing well. Our topic for today is the applications of mirrors and lenses in optical instruments. And it is divided into three discussions. So we have the uses of plane mirrors in optical devices, uses of curved mirrors in optical devices, and uses of lenses. Our objectives for today are the following. Identify ways in which the properties of mirrors and lenses determine their uses in optical instruments. Explain on how mirrors and lenses work in cameras and other optical instruments. And cite the importance of mirrors and lenses in our daily life. Let us discuss first the uses of plane mirrors in optical devices. Mirrors and lenses both have the ability to reflect or refract light. This property has put mirrors and lenses in use for centuries. As of 2010, mirrors and lenses are so prevalent that most people use them every day, regardless of whether or not they are consciously perceived the use. There are standard and innovative uses for mirrors. Imagine yourself as a curious little scientist. Have that drive to push new limits and keep yourself excited about the world around you. Usually, in science, the real answer is usually far from obvious. When we are curious, we ask ourselves, why did this happen? Or, why isn't this the result I expected? As a human being, Curiosity is one of the greatest strengths we have. So in this lesson, you will learn how plane mirrors are used in devices, utilized by scientists, and even ordinary people like you. You will have a broader understanding on how plane mirrors are widely used in our day-to-day -day living and how they play a significant role in technology. Optical instruments are the devices that process light wave to improve an image for clearer viewing. Using an optical instrument like a magnifying lens or other complex device like microscope or telescope usually makes things bigger and allows us to see in a more detailed manner. Using converging lenses, makes things look bigger and on the other hand, diverging lenses always get smaller images for you. The first optical instruments were telescopes, which were used to magnify distant images, and microscopes used for magnifying very small images. These instruments have been greatly improved since the days of Galileo and Van Leeuwenhoek and have been extended into other portions of the electromagnetic spectrum. A mirror with a flat surface is what we call a plane mirror. This is an ordinary mirror without a curve inside and out. These mirrors can be found almost anywhere from bathrooms to hallways to exteriors of buildings, and knowing how they reflect light can make complex mirror variants significantly easier to understand. The images that a plane mirror reflects are known as virtual images, but they are different from the simulated digital images that you can see on your computer screen or in a game on your phone. The difference between a real versus virtual image is that a real image is formed when light converges at a point, 
like looking at an apple on your desk. A virtual image is formed from two divergent rays of light which never meet. To simplify, a plane mirror creates an image of an object you cannot touch. This way, all mirrors create virtual images, but plane mirrors reflect light differently than concave or convex mirrors do. Let us discuss the application of plane mirrors. Where are plane mirrors used? The first one here is elevator mirrors. Elevators are one of the greatest products of technology because going up 25 flights of stairs sounds tiring and time-consuming. If you thought that the creators of elevators were only concerned with the engineering part of it, you are definitely wrong. Installed mirrors are strategically placed for a great reason. Turns out, back in the day, when elevators were relatively new, people stood in them, staring into nothingness with an exaggerated sense of time because they had nothing else to do. All they could think of was their very natural fear of falling from an elevator suspended mid-air with nothing but cables. So, mirrors were installed in order to distract people and give them something to look at while they waited. The mirrors also gave the usually small space of an elevator a sense of depth, thereby reducing the feeling of claustrophobia that one might feel in such an enclosed space. The next one is periscope. A periscope is an instrument for observation over, around, or through an object, obstacle, or condition that prevents direct line of sight observation from an observer's current position. A simple periscope consists of an outer case with mirrors at each end set parallel to each other at a 45 degree angle. Periscopes allow a submarine, when submerged at a relatively shallow depth, to search visually for nearby targets and threats on the surface of the water and in the air. Next is Kaleidoscope. A kaleidoscope is a toy that uses light and mirrors to reflect objects and create beautiful, fascinating repeating patterns. There are many different types of kaleidoscopes that create different patterns, but all use the same basic laws of physics, manipulating light and reflection. Kaleidoscope is derived from the Greek words kalus, meaning beautiful. Eros, meaning form, and scopin, meaning to view. When looking through the hole, light filters through the glass or clear plastic on the end of the object chamber and illuminates the objects, which then reflect off of all of the mirrors. The reflections bounce off of one another as the light passes through the tube. The eye sees the bouncing reflections creating the patterns. As the kaleidoscope rotates, the objects shift in the chamber, and the reflection changes, creating new patterns. The concept is simple, but creates a wonderful end result that delights and entertains. Uses of Curved Mirrors and Optical Devices now that you already understand what optical devices are and how plane mirrors are used in these devices, it is now time to learn something new. Aside from plane mirrors, we also have another classification of mirrors known as the curved mirrors. There is also a wide array of optical devices using the curved mirrors. 
Let us explore more with the succeeding items. Let us discuss the concave and convex mirrors. In contrast to plane mirrors, convex and concave mirrors curve the rays of light that hit them. This results in the virtual images produced by their reflections coming out distorted. As the light rays move towards or away from the center of the mirror. For this reason, convex and concave mirrors aren't useful in bathrooms, but they can be helpful in the right situation. For example, because plane mirrors can't produce useful images at certain angles, the mirrors on the side of a car are convex. They allow drivers to see behind and to the sides of their vehicle. Through this, virtual images aren't at the same distance as the objects they reflect. This is why car mirrors have messages reminding drivers that objects in the mirror may be closer than they appear in the reflection. Convex mirrors curved outwardly. Light rays diverge as they reflect of the curve of this mirror. When the rays converge again, the viewer sees an image. Convex mirror images are upright and appear farther away than they really are. Concave mirrors curve inwardly. Light rays diverge off the curve of this mirror. The image may be upside down if the object is too far away. When the object is close to the mirror, it appears right side up and magnified. So let us discuss the application of curved mirrors. The first one is side mirrors. One of the most important safety devices on your vehicle is its set of mirrors. It might be considered the simplest but it plays a great role in ensuring your safety on the road. A side mirror is also known as the wing mirror. This is a mirror placed on the outside of motor vehicles to help the driver see areas behind and to the sides of the vehicle, outside the driver's peripheral view known as the blind spot. Next is dental mirror. Concave mirrors are the most common dental instruments used in a dentist's office. And most patients will agree that they are less scary compared to the other equipment such as forceps and drills. They are part of diagnostic instruments in dentistry. The concave mirror is sometimes referred to as the mouth mirror. The head of the mirror is usually round and can be in different sizes depending on the diameter of the mirror. The mirror is made up of a handle and head. The head is made up of specified sizes depending on the manufacturers but what is likely to change is the head, which depends on the requirement. Concave mirrors magnify images such that when the object is at a distance from the mirror, it forms an inverted image. And as the object gets closer to the mirror, it forms an image that is magnified. Some of the mirror's handles are metal, while others are made up of a combination of metal and resin or metal with silicone padding. Others are made up of resin only. Dentists that are concerned about the weight of the mirror prefer a lightweight mirror made up of resin handle with hand grips that are silicone padded. And most mirrors are made up of round surfaces. The mirror number shows the relative diameter of the mirror. Most dentists prefer size 4 or 5 mirrors. But a small-sized mirror with a number 3 diameter is important in case of mirror size issues. Mirrors that are double-sided help dentists enhance visualization, improve light reflection, 
and ergonomically beneficial since they have a unique bend in the mirror stem. Today, dentists' mirrors are more than a shiny surface as manufacturers have come up with all the kinds of mirrors that give dentists an enhanced view of the inside of the patient's mouth. And the last one is solar cooker. A solar cooker can do almost anything a stove or an oven can do. Only it uses a natural, non-polluting, free, abundant energy source. In this article, we'll find out how sunlight becomes heat. Check out the different types of cookers available and how they work. See what makes solar cooking a potential lifesaver in many parts of the world and examine some of its shortcomings. At its simplest, the sunlight to heat conversion occurs when photons or the particles of light moving around within the light waves interact with molecules moving around in a substance. The electromagnetic rays emitted by the sun have a lot of energy in them. When they strike matter, whether solid or liquid, all of this energy causes the molecules in that matter to vibrate. They get excited and start jumping around. And this activity generates heat. Solar cookers use a couple of different methods to harness this heat. Let us discuss the uses of lenses in optical devices. You encounter lenses every day. Whether it is the lens on your cell phone camera, the lenses on the eyeglasses or contact lenses you use to see clearly, magnifying glasses, microscopes, telescopes, or something else entirely. The physics of lenses explains how a simple piece of glass can be used to magnify, minimize, or bring images into focus for any purpose. Essentially, lenses work by bending light rays that pass through them through refraction. But this basic point can be implemented in different ways that varies according to the lens type. Luckily, the basics of such lenses are easy to understand when you learn a little more about how they work. So what is lens? A lens is a piece of transparent material that is shaped so as to cause light rays to bend in a specific way as they pass through it. Whether that means making the rays converge to a specific point or to diverge as if from a specific point. The material used could be a piece of glass or plastic, and the shape of the lens determines whether it causes light rays to converge or diverge. The word lens comes from the Latin word for lentil, due to the similarity in shape between a converging lens and the legume. The actual bending of light rays produced by a lens that occurs when the lens material has a different index of refraction than the surrounding air. This behavior is described by Snell's law for refraction, which relates the different in angle between the incident and refracted light ray to the indices of refraction for the two materials. In short, the law says that if you are going from a lower refractive index substance to a higher one, for example, from air to glass, the light ray is deflected towards the normal to the surface or towards the direction perpendicular to the surface at that point, and that the opposite is true for light rays going from a higher refractive index material to a lower one. Terms in Optics There are quite a few unique terms used in optics and understanding this is crucial if you are studying the physics of lenses. 
First, focal point is the point where parallel rays converge when after passing through a lens. Second, focal length of a lens is the distance from its center to the focal point. Third, optical axis is the line of symmetry for the lens. Fourth, light ray is an approximation of the path of light, where straight lines are used to represent the motion of light waves. The fifth one is by convex lens. This is a simple optical lens with two convex. Where are lenses used? Number 1. Magnifying lens A magnifying glass is a convex lens. Convex means curved outward, like the underside of a spoon or the dome of a sports stadium. It is the opposite of concave or curved inward. A lens is something that allows light rays to pass through it and bends or refracts them as they do so. A magnifying glass uses a convex lens because these lenses cause light rays to converge or come together. The magnifying glass represents one of the simplest, most direct applications of a converging lens. As light enters the lens, it becomes focused to a specific focal point in front of the center of the lens. Once you bring the magnifying glass to the optimal distance, so the focal point reaches the object, the object will appear at maximum magnification. Move the glass farther from the object and it will become distorted. Move the glass closer to the object and it will decrease in magnification. A magnifying glass, in effect, tricks your eyes into seeing what isn't there. Light rays from the object enter the glass in parallel but are refracted by the lens so that they converge as they exit and create a virtual image on the retina of your eye. This image appears to be larger than the object itself because of simple geometry. Your eyes trace the light rays back in straight lines to the virtual image, which is farther from your eyes than the object is and thus appears bigger. Next is camera. A camera lens is one of the most familiar types of lenses you encounter on a daily basis. And these come in many different types. Although they all share the same basic principles of operation outlined previously. The aperture, which lets light into the inside of the camera, corresponds to the pupil. The system of lenses in a camera performs the same function as the lens of the eye. However, whereas the lens of the eye changes shape to change focus, Glass lenses are not very forgiving of shape changes. Instead, the lens system can be slid along its optical axis in order to focus on the film. Of course, the film plays the role of the retina. In addition, cameras have a shutter, which opens and closes quickly so that the film does not get inundated with light. This produces a more or less clear image of the instant that the photographer shoots. A prime lens is a basic lens with a fixed focal length, and a zoom lens has a variable focal length. So you don't have to physically change your location to get something in focus. A wide-angle lens is a type of lens with a very small focal length that dramatically increases the field of view. And a fisheye lens is essentially an extreme version of a wide-angle lens. Next is the eyeglass or contact lens. Other common types of lenses are eyeglasses lenses or the contact lens. 
and both of this works to correct the problems with your vision. If you are nearsighted, this means your eye lenses create images in front of the light-sensitive retina in your eye. And so, you need diverging or concave lenses to move the image further back. Nearsightedness or myopia is a common vision condition in which you can see objects near to you clearly. But objects farther away are blurry. It occurs when the shape of your eye causes light rays to bend or refract incorrectly. Focusing images in front of your retina instead of on your retina. If you are farsighted, the lenses in your eyes would produce an image further back than your retinas. So you need converging lenses to correct this issue. Farsightedness or hyperopia is a common vision condition in which you can see distant objects clearly, but objects nearby may be blurry. The degree of your farsightedness influences your focusing ability. Both contact lenses and eyeglasses correct this in the same way by adding an additional corrective lens to make the effective focal length of your eye match the distance to your retina. But there are differences because contact lenses sit directly on your eyes. In a contact lens, the lens doesn't need to cover as much space. It only needs to be big enough for your pupil at its maximum dilation and can achieve this with less material. For eyeglasses lenses, the lens needs to cover a much larger area and is thicker as a result. Next is microscope. Microscopes work by using biconvex lenses or lenses with two convex sides to produce a magnified version of the images. Microscopes are a little more complicated because they usually have multiple lenses, but they produce magnified images in basically the same way. As on microscopes, these have another lens in the eyepiece to make sure the captured light is in focus when it reaches your eye. A simple microscope uses a single lens. So magnifying glasses are simple microscopes. Stereoscopic or dissecting microscopes usually are simple microscopes as well. Stereoscopic microscopes use two oculars or eyepieces, one for each eye to allow binocular vision and provide a three-dimensional view of the object. Stereoscopic microscopes may have different lighting options as well, allowing the object to be lit from above, below, or both. Magnifying glasses and stereoscopic microscopes can be used to view details on opaque objects like rocks, insects, or plants. Compound microscopes use two or more lenses in a row to magnify objects for viewing. In general, compound microscopes require that the specimen to be viewed is thin enough or transparent enough that the light can pass through. These microscopes provide high magnification but the view is two-dimensional. So, why is it called a compound microscope? The common light microscope used in the laboratory is called a compound microscope because it contains two types of lenses that function to magnify an object. The lens closest to the eye is called the ocular, while the lens closest to the object is called the objective. Most microscopes are parfocal. Parfocal refers to objectives that can be changed with minimal or no refocusing. When you adjust your microscope from one magnification to another, it is nice when the lenses remain in focus the entire time.
This is possible when a microscope has a parfocal objectives. Parfocal means that the microscope is binocular. Parfocal means that when one objective lens is in focus, then the other objectives will also be in focus. The last one is binoculars. Binoculars and telescopes are the next best thing. They take you up to the action without having to move a muscle. Binoculars are based on the science of optics and some pretty clever tricks that lenses pull on light. You can probably see where we are heading. If you want to see something in the distance, you can use two convex lenses, placed one in front of the other. The first lens catches light rays from the distant object and makes a focused image a short distance behind the lens. This lens is called the objective because it's nearest to the object you are looking at. The second lens picks up that image and magnifies it. Just like a magnifying glass magnifies an image on paper. If you put the two lenses in a closed tube, you have a telescope. There is a quite good demonstration on this page at birdwatching.com. So you can make your own telescope easily enough with a couple of magnifying glasses and a cardboard tube wrapped around them. Binoculars are simply two telescopes side by side, one for each eye. But there is a catch. When light rays from a distant object pass through a convex lens, they cross over. That's why distant things sometimes look upside down if you look at them through a magnifying glass. The second lens doesn't sort out the problem. So, binoculars have a pair of prisms, large wedges of glass, inside them to rotate the image through 180 degrees. One prism rotates the image through 90 degrees, flips it onto its side. Then the next prism rotates it through another 90 degrees. So the two prisms effectively turn it upside down. The prisms can either be arranged in a back-to-back -back arrangement or known as a roof prisms. Or at 90 degrees or known as poro prisms. The prisms explain why binoculars are heavy and why they are sometimes quite chunky in the middle. Field glasses, which are compact binoculars like the ones shown in the photo here, flip the incoming images using only lenses. There are no prisms, so field glasses are smaller, lighter, and more compact, but the image quality is poorer.